Welcome to Non-Predictive Decision Making, Why and How. Traditional software development is full of predictions, typically involving the holy trinity of scope, time, and budget. This team will finish this scope by this date is an example of a prediction that is common in traditional software development. Let's explore two reasons why predictive decision making of this sort is problematic in software development. There's a mathematical reason and a cognitive reason. Let's start with the mathematical reason. Software development finish times look something like a Pareto or power law distribution, which you see here at the top. Unfortunately, our intuitions are formed by distributions like the well-known normal distribution or bell curve that you see at the bottom. There are three significant differences between these two distributions. First, the normal curve is symmetric while the power law distribution is not. Second, much of the normal curve's probability is clustered around its mean. This is not true of the power law distribution, which can have an infinite mean. Third, the normal curve has a small variance, while the power law distribution has a large variance. In fact, the power law distribution can have an infinite or non-existent variance. One of the big mistakes that we make is to think of scope, budget, and time as a single point in a distribution, instead of as a distribution. When the distribution is normal, that is an error, but not a tragic one. However, when the distribution is Pareto, that is a massive, massive error. The second reason that predictive decision making is so problematic is that we human beings are subject to a significant cognitive error. The mere fact that a prediction exists makes us overconfident. A great example of this is the typical use of Gantt charts. Everything on the Gantt chart has a fat right tail and yet the predictions in the Gantt chart are treated as if they were certainty. So to summarize, why is non-predictive decision-making so important? Because when white tail effects dominate, predictions are meaningless. They contain very little information content, and when they are wrong, there's a reasonable probability that they will be catastrophically wrong. So how can we make decisions without using or making predictions? Here's a wonderful real-world example from a search manual which describes how to search for missing people. This square search pattern starts at the last known location of the person, and then the search party searches in concentric squares. Note that this pattern relies exclusively on universal laws and empirical data, not on predictions. The physical law, or the universal law, is that to get from point A to point B, a person needs to travel through all of the points in between. There are no space travel or time travel machines. That's why traveling in concentric circles around the initial location of the person makes sense. And then there's the empirical data. The search starts at the person's last known position. A scrum team will organize itself in a very similar manner. Its planning is not about making predictions about its future, but about coordinating its efforts based on universal laws and empirical data. The universal laws in Scrum come from science and from the Agile Manifesto, while the empirical data comes from observations, experiments, and so forth. The key is that there is no inference. There are no predictions.